Hello, I'm Akash from Google Cloud's Apigee. Welcome to another video on 500 internal server error under the Edge Runtime Errors module of the Apigee troubleshooting series. In order to follow along the examples in this video, you should have an Apigee Edge account and I've gone through the previous videos in the Edge Runtime Errors module of the Apigee troubleshooting series. In the previous videos, we covered how to troubleshoot and resolve 500 internal server errors caused due to failures in various APG Edge policies. In this video, we will cover how to troubleshoot and resolve 500 internal server errors caused due to backend servers. First of all, let's have a look at a few example 500 responses sent by the backend server. In the first example, the response from the backend states that the email or password does not match. And you can notice that the response is in a JSON format. Kindly note that the content in the error message of the response completely depends on the internal implementation of the backend application. Another example here shows an error in the XML format sent by the backend server. It looks like the user is not authorized to perform a certain operation or access the resource on the backend server. The third example here again shows an error returned in the XML format. In this case, the response from the backend just says internal server error. So there's not much useful information. As we noticed, a backend server can respond with a 500 response under several circumstances. Typically, it is the general catch all error when the server throws an exception. Or in other words, 500 response is used when no more specific error message is suitable. However, we saw a couple of examples where 500 response code is sent from the backend if invalid credentials are passed. So 500 internal server error can be sent by the backend server for various reasons. As I mentioned earlier, the message format and its content is entirely dependent on the internal implementation of the backend application. We may need to consult the backend team to troubleshoot and resolve the errors caused by the backend. Let us now take a look at a quick demo. Consider an API proxy which uses a JavaScript policy to parse a JSON payload and subsequently send the request to the backend server. Assume that you receive the JSON payload with the content as shown in this file. Here's the JavaScript source file that parses this JSON. Let us now try sending a request to this API proxy and trace the same. As you can see, a 500 internal server error is encountered. If you examine the trace in detail, you will notice that the JavaScript policy executed successfully and the request was further sent to the backend but the backend server responded with a 500 internal server error. As we saw in a few examples, the backend server may send an error message that indicates the likely cause along with the 500 response code in some cases. So let's check if there is any error message sent as a part of the backend's response in this particular example. Here you go, not authorized. To troubleshoot this error, you could use show curl in the trace to validate if the request parameters are valid and in the format as expected by the backend server. Most of the cases, you may not be aware of what is expected by the backend server if you don't own the backend application code. So you may have to consult the backend team to investigate this issue further on their end. If you would like to know more about other possible causes for 500 internal server errors and how to troubleshoot and resolve them, please watch our other videos in this module. Please do share, like, and comment if you find this video helpful. Thank you.